In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. A question came up during catechesis in prison, can you become a homosexual? I was talking about that if we do not fight against sin, we become slaves to it, and that we come to a point where we can't resist it. And so that question came up, and I reframed the question because I suppose it's possible to become a homosexual. I suppose it might be possible to be born a homosexual. I don't really care. I know that the, uh, the leftist in the morality spectrum, they want to tell us that. It doesn't matter to me what they say. What matters is that God says that certain kinds of conduct are deleterious to the soul. Fornication is deleterious to the soul. Homosexual conduct is deleterious to the soul. Jealousy, anger, lust. All of those things are bad for the soul because they're not the way of life. So the question is not so much, can you become a homosexual, as what do you do with your desires? You should submit all of your desires to God, and the bad ones you should try to suppress. Now, whether or not you can change your desires is not as important as whether or not you struggle to follow the law of God. That's how this whole issue, in my opinion, about homosexuality should be framed. We should follow the law of God as best we can. And if we fall, we get up. But we never call what is sin to be not sin. Now, what about a person who's born heterosexual, born this way? So he always desires women. And he has a particular thing. His type is long and leggy and buxom blondes. So what? If he's not married, he should not fornicate. And you should not fantasize, and you should not look at pornography, and you should not masturbate looking at pictures of blondes. And if he's married, then all those things apply, plus he should be true to his wife, even if she's a short brunette. It doesn't matter. What matters is if he submits himself to God. That's what matters. That's the only thing that matters. I'm going to tell you a little story, one of my favorite ones. I've told it a million times. But it's a very important story. So on the way to a city, there were two monks. They were carrying baskets, and they were going to sell them in the city. And on the way out of the city was a prostitute. And there was an old man and his disciple. And the young man covered his face and looked away. And the old man stopped, and he talked to the prostitute and looked right at her and exchanged pleasantries for quite some time, and then they walked away. The young man was scandalized. And the old man knew this because he had this, the, the gift to know. And he said, my son, as we were walking on the way, who was it that we just encountered? And then the, old, the young man was a little embarrassed. Well, father, that was, a, that was a prostitute. Oh, really? For my part, I didn't know if it was a man or a woman. Do you understand the punchline here? That you can conquer your sins to the point where you no longer have desire. Or perhaps you won't. Uh, somebody at the prison was telling me about how he's prone to irritation. And in the past, he was prone to get irritated and yell and curse and even become violent. He doesn't do that anymore, but it's internal. And he has these complaining sessions with God saying, God, when is this going to go away? I, I want to stop being irritated. And, you know, I can tell him the standard things and pray and your fast and everything else. But really, when it comes down to it, it comes down to we struggle against our sins. And eventually, God will give us transcendence over them. And if he doesn't give us transcendence over them and we struggle to the end of our days, so be it. It doesn't matter if we're born this way, born to be irritable or born to be jealous or born to have any kind of sexual orientation. It doesn't matter what sexual orientation is made up for next year or what gender is made up for next year. We have to follow the law of God. Not because it's arbitrary, but because it's the way of life. So the question of about homosexuals, can you become a homosexual, can you be born a homosexual, is unimportant. What's important is, do we want to follow the law of God? Do we want to struggle? And I believe absolutely with all my heart, there will be homosexuals who struggle with their affliction, with their sin, and are not completely... Uh, transcended over it, that are not able to completely conquer it, will be in the kingdom of heaven because they repent. And there will be many people who do not repent of sins that seem to be more minor, who will not 
inherit the kingdom of heaven. God expects us to follow him and give our will to him. That's the most important thing. And whether or not we're real good at doing good, that's not so important. What's important is we repent, we ask God's help, and we submit ourselves to God. So that's how I frame the homosexual question, whether or not you're born this way. May God help us to follow his will, his holy, his life-giving, salvific will in all things.